I can now have uh, everybody's attention. Um, by one o'clock this and slightly long, so I'll return your homework to you tomorrow, just so we don't spend lecture time on that. And we are going to continue looking at linear stuff today. So linear equations. Y equals MX plus B. And just to make sure we're all on the same page here, um, many of you might already know what the graph of a linear equation looks like, but if not, the graph of a linear equation looks like a straight line, and it always looks like a straight line, no matter what x is. And no matter what, sorry, no matter what M is, and no matter what B is. Straight lines have um, the following property that, that given any two point. There is a line connecting them. One of Euclid's axioms. So one of the first mathematical statements that anybody ever made was this observation. If you have, say, a point there and a point there, you can draw a line connecting those two points. And from what I just said, a line is the graph of a linear equation, y equals mx plus b. So we're going to have sort of ponder two questions today. The first and maybe the main question is, Given any two points, can we find the equation of a line? That is to say, y equals <laughs> mx plus mx plus b connecting those points. So that can be kind of our first question. And our second question in this class, a question like that should always have a twin. This isn't a pure math class after all. So the first question, can we do it? The second question, can we think of any situations where we'd want to do it? So we'll answer both of those questions. And before we do, I'm just going to get one bit of terminology up on the board for you. Again, this is something that you 
may have seen before, this M represents a rate of change. Linear equations have constant rates of change, and that's what M is. But in this particular context, M is also often called the slope because M is controlling how steep the graph of the line is. So we'll take that as our first goal, and then we'll do a second example that will be an application. All of these questions are going to be answered in basically the same way. That is to say, any time you're given the two points and you want to find the line connecting them, there's just an algorithm that you have to follow. Let's start by observing that an equation of a line has two parts. There's this M and there's that B. And if we're trying to find the equation of a line, we need both of those things. This has to be done in order. There is sadly no room for creativity and self-expression in these problems. You always have to find M first, then you can find B. And then the last step is, is trivial. Once you found M and found B, you can put them together and get the equation of a line. So we'll take one and two in order. How? Do we find M? So we have two points. Let's call them X1, Y1. Let's fix that so we really are calling them X1, Y1 and x2, y2, and we've drawn a line connecting these points to the best of my ability, and we're looking for the slope of this line. We're looking for f. Well, some of you might have seen this kind of memory aid that M, the slope of a line, is the rise over the run. And what that means, looking at this picture, is if we draw in a right triangle like so, and we call this side of the right triangle with a rise, and this side of the right triangle with a run, then the slope of this line is the rise divided by the run. Framing this as, as an equality with like algebraic operations in it, the rise is gotten by subtracting 
the y coordinates. And the run is gotten by subtracting the x coordinates. So you subtract the y coordinates, you subtract the x coordinates, and you divide those two differences. And there's how you get m. Let's see how this works in practice. It can be pretty hard when you have these abstract symbols like x sub one and y sub two. Let's put two actual points on the board and see how this works. Let's say one comma four, and five comma negative two. So if here is one comma four and here not drawn to scale is five comma negative two. There's well, this doesn't like my dots, so let's just to draw it. There is a line connecting these points. Y equals MX plus B. And we are trying to find M. We're trying to find this slope. And according to the equation I have on the last frame, the slope is gotten by subtracting the y coordinates and subtracting the x coordinates and dividing them. And here's a potential question. How do you know which is which? I mean, this top of the fraction should be gotten by subtracting the y's, but should that be negative two minus four, or should it be four minus negative two? And the answer to that question is that it doesn't matter. If you let this be x1, y1, and you let this be x2, y2, and you use this formula, you're going to get the slope. But also, if you let this be x2, y2, and you let this be x1, y1, you'll get the exact same slope. So it doesn't matter which point is which. Since this is what I have written on the board and I don't feel like erasing stuff again, let's go with that. X2 is one, Y2 is four, X1 is five, Y1 is negative two. After that, this form to the just becomes plug and play, by which I mean there's not a lot of thought going on here. We're just taking these values and plugging them into this equation. So, four minus negative two, one minus 
five. And I said, I know I said not a lot of thought, but let's be careful here. Four minus a negative, four minus negative two is positive six. And then one minus five is four. And you could, you could get that as a decimal, or you could keep it as a fraction. It's not negative, the mm -hmm. one minus five? Is it a negative? Oh, thank you, you're exactly correct. One minus five is negative four. That becomes negative three halves. Thank you for catching that. Uh, I guess the danger of taking statements that there isn't a lot of thought involved in something too seriously. Another question? Would you like us to keep it in improper fraction? Um, I think the next step might be easier if you keep it as a fraction, but you can you could convert it to a decimal too if you want. Either is fine. Um, so there's finding M. Our next step then is to find B. And rather than try to do this as some kind of abstract thing, let's keep the example we're working with and let's try to find B in this example. So we've got those two points. Let me copy them over. One comma four and five comma negative two. And we've got M. We found that M is, let's see, is negative three halves. And we're looking ultimately, I mean, I, we want to find B now, but our ultimate goal is the equation of a line. We're looking for Y equals MX plus B. And notice that we're sort of halfway done because we know what M is. We found M. So we know that Y is negative three halves X plus B. And now we want to find B. And we have options. We're going to use one of those points to find B. It doesn't matter which point we use. Let's just select the first point to demonstrate the method at play here. Remember that points are of the form x comma y. Saying we have the point one comma four is telling us that when x equals one, Y equals four. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these values and we're going to plug them right into this line. We know that Y is negative three halves X plus B. And we know that when X is one, Y is four. 
if we put that information together, we get four equals negative three halves times one plus b. And this is an equation we can use to solve for b. We can add three halves to both sides of the equation. If we're going to add fractions, we'll want the common denominator. Four is eight halves. We add three halves to both sides of this equality. 11 halves equals B. And going back to what I was sort of saying earlier, here, when I said, or rather here, when I asked which of these points is X1, Y1, which of these points is X2, Y2, and the answer to that question was that it doesn't matter. Why did I use the point one, four instead of the point five, negative two? Because it's easier. Yes. They're mathematically the same. I just figured multiplying negative three halves by one is maybe a little easier than multiplying negative three halves by five. But if we had used this second point and toughed it out, we would have wound up with the exact same B value that we got with the first point. So mathematically, it doesn't matter which point you use. You might in practice find that one is easier. And we're almost done with this problem, but we're looking for the equation of a line and at no point in any of these frames have we written down the equation of the line. Let's make sure we actually answer the question. If we're asked for an equation, we better write an equation. Y equals negative three halves X plus eleven halves. That's the process. Does anybody have any questions about the process? Then let's ask ourselves, um, let's ask ourselves if we can find anything that at least resembles an application for all of this. Can we find anything like a real world situation where it might be helpful to do? Let's look as an example at a probably unfamiliar temperature scale. Has anyone in this room ever seen the ranking scale before? I'm seeing one, uh, one hand raised. It's used occasionally, I think primarily in engineering, but it's not sort of part of anyone or any of our day-to-day -day lives. Let's give a little information about this temperature scale. 
it seems like for whatever reason, the standard way to talk about temperature scales is by talking about water and boiling points and freezing points. So let's give this information here. Water freezes at 491.67 degrees ranking. Um, this scale is calibrated so that absolute zero, the coldest that it's possible to be, is zero degrees ranking, which is why we're seeing such a large number for the freezing point of water, because it's possible to be much colder than this. Water boils at 671.67 degrees ranking. Let's state a goal. Let's try to find a conversion formula. Let's let X be the temperature in degrees Celsius, and Y be the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. And, and I'll just tell you up front that this is a linear relationship. Y equals mx plus b. And let's ask, can we find the equation converting Celsius to Rankine? And not if we restrict ourselves entirely to this information, but we're given information about the freezing and boiling point of water in one temperature scale. That's just to make sure we're all on the same page. Let's make sure we know the freezing and boiling points of water in the Celsius scale. Water freezes at zero degrees Celsius and it boils at a hundred degrees Celsius. And so far, this doesn't seem like anything we've done today. I mean, I've we've learned how to find the equations of lines that go through points, but we don't have any points written on the board. But the freezing point of water is the freezing point of water. That is to say that when water freezes, it is zero degrees Celsius. And it is 491. 0.67 degrees ranking. So this represents water freezing. When it's, and, I, and again, this is just sort of the very banal observation that the freezing point of water doesn't change 
how should I phrase this? I'm probably overcomplicating it for you. Probably the longer I talk, the more confusing it becomes. This represents water freezing. Freezing in degrees Celsius, freezing in degrees Rankine. That's all I needed to say. So when we have a value of X, we have a corresponding value of Y. And that gives us a point when X is zero, Y, is 491.67. And similarly, the boiling point of water gives us a point when X is 100, Y is 671.67. Sixty-seven. So we're looking for a linear equation. We're given two points on the line. This is, after all, exactly what we were doing just a few minutes earlier today. And let's go ahead and do this. Um, we've got the point zero, 491.67, and we've got the point 100, 671.67, and let's find M, and let's find B, and then let's write down the equation y equals mx plus b. Any questions before we trundle on forwards? Like, does everyone see where the points came from, what we're trying to accomplish? Then, Again, it doesn't matter in the least which of these points we call x1, y1, and which of them we call x2, y2. So I'll go with those. M is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And that is going to be, let's see, is our calculator loaded new share calculator doesn't seem to be loaded okay whatever desmos.com is not really helpful but as we discovered yesterday we can just google basic arithmetic like this 671.67 minus 491.67 divided by 100 minus zero is just 100, but we'll Google it. We'll get 1.8. That might be a familiar number. It shows up if you're converting from Celsius to Fahrenheit as well. And there is M. Let me see. I need to go back to the whiteboard.
1.8. And the equation we are looking for is therefore y equals 1.8x plus b. And now to find B, we need to take one of those points and we need to plug it in. From a mathematical point of view, it doesn't matter ultimately which point we choose, but maybe we think that one of these points would be a little nicer to work with than the other. In particular, we're going to have to multiply 1.8 by x. And if x is zero, that is a very easy multiplication to do. So maybe I'll select that value of X and Y, but once again, as long as you don't make any arithmetic errors, it doesn't ultimately matter which X and Y you use. But, but this choice of X and Y does make the next step extremely simple. You can just read B right off of that. B is 491.67. And we better, if our goal was to find this conversion equation, once again, we'd better make sure we actually write down whatever it is we're asked for. And there is our final answer. So there's N application if we have a little more if we have a little sort of spare time at the end of the semester we might look into linear regression which is kind of similar to this but maybe a little more realistic to the kind of math you do in real world situations for now Thank mm -hmm.